Oh, hello and very good evening to you, everybody. Sincere apologies for the lateness of the hour. We're about 15 minutes late in joining you. I was sitting here at 1 minute to 10 with everything in order. Then when I pressed the button, it couldn't connect. So, hopefully we've connected now and we are up and running. Thank you very, very much for waiting. I know it's a little bit frustrating, but there you go. One can't do anything about technology. Excellent. Sean Finlay, Ali Heening, tremendous stuff. You're all with me. A very, very good evening to you. If you've just joined us, I'm Scotty McClue with the title of the world's top broadcaster. I'm with you for one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment. Sunday night, the Skype lines are open, so I'm hoping we can hook up this week. I think that will be fabulous. Again, sincere apologies for arriving a little bit plus tard, as we say en français. Woohoo! says Anna Boyles. Hello, Scotty Boy, says Mark Gruden. Hello, Mark Dinky Doo. Hello, Scotty. Jane McDonald's watching, wonderful lady. Luke Jones is watching. Broadband is slow in our area, says Mark. Thanks, Mark. Mark's obviously checked it out, and we have a slow broadband. But there we are. Hopefully you can see me and hear me. Luke Jones is watching. Giuseppe, no bother, Scotty. Worth waiting for. The world's leading broadcaster, Giuseppe. You are very, very kind indeed. Lovely to be with you all. Now, um, I popped up earlier, uh, about one o'clock this lunchtime, British summertime, and did an Easter message for you all. And also this afternoon we were testing a new camera, but um, it's not working terribly well, I have to say. So there we are. Happy Easter, Scotty, says Stephen Harris. Hi, Scotty, do you think it's getting skinny? World War Three is going to kick off. Well, if you listen to my Easter message, what I am actually proposing there is that instead of a defense budget, we turn it all into musical instruments, dance lessons, choirs, singing lessons, um, symphony orchestras, dancing, the whole lot, and uh, we just have the creative arts and uh, do away with all sorts of armaments. So when you see these big trucks in uh, North Korea, imagine on them is a jazz band, the North Korean jazz men giving da 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 all that sort of stuff and I think that might be good uh, happy Easter from Gina Stewart thank you Gina Stewart you are lovely lovely people and a very happy Easter to you my good friends uh, MI5 are tampering with your internet Scotty no look I don't think so I think that's a conspiracy theory gone too far it's just a little bit slow area and that's one of the things we have to take in. So, just as I say, bear with me. Uh, I'm not paying the credit card bill to increase a nuke war starts, as we'll all be cremated for free, says William Patterson. Thank you for cheering us all up there, William. I think Scotland needs to be independent and get out of the whole thing and be well clear of anything like that. These uh, politicians need to grow up. They need to read their history books. They need to see what happens when uh, you mobilize military, because the military are very, very good at what they do. And I've probably told you this before, but when Nikita Khrushchev, Mr. Khrushchev, was in charge of Russia, he had a word with the youthful President Kennedy, John F. Kennedy in the United States, and he said, be very, very careful, young man, about mobilizing your military, because it's very difficult to stop them. So. Not from any of them. And I think we need to say um, to uh, all your world leaders, you need to sit round the round table and get discussing. I can't hear this, says Morag McPherson. Well, can everybody else hear it? Is it Morag's on equipment? Maybe you haven't turned your volume up. Can everybody else hear it? Okay. Well said, Scotty. Independence. And if would say Jean Perret. And uh, William Patterson, you're good at that. Uh, good at what, William? Uh, so there we go. Right, can everybody hear this? Now, I've got the Skype running, guys. If you want to Skype in, it's scotty.mcclue, and we can have a chit-chat. Hi, Scotty, we're hearing you loud and clear from Pyongyang, says Gary L. How fantastic. 
you're in Pyongyang, and you've got me there. If you are global, guys, tell me exactly who you are. Like we have a gentleman in Paraguay, very often pops up. We've got lots of people in Australia, we've got lots of people in Canada, and in the United States of America. Excellent stuff. Yvonne Boyd McLennan, I hear you. Hello, Scotty. How's things going, says Ron Stewart? Great, Ron. Fantastic. I hear you, says Anna Moyes. Dinky do, Scotty, says Andy McCrory. And it's too late now to stop wars. It's going to get worse, says Steve Burris. It's never, ever too late to stop wars, but people need to grow up. And I would quite like the world leaders to say, listen, we're buddies. We talk all the time. We trust each other implicitly. Neither of us are interested in war. Neither of us are interested in winding each other up. We want to sit round the big round table where we're all equal. Scotty McClue can chair it, if you like. I'd be delighted to chair that. That's no problem. I've uh, you know, spoken to world leaders before, so I would not have a problem chairing um, a, a, a summit of world leaders and saying to them, now you need to get your house in order. Last week we discussed actually a committee for hiring and firing world leaders and saying if you can't do this, you know, you just talk to them and say, if you can't do this, Jim or Billy or whoever it is, then you need to get your act together. The rest of us will have to take over and run it for you just now. Uh, so there we are. David Gardner's watching. Comments not coming on full screen, says Colin. Guys, I think this is probably your equipment because mine is running. I can see it here, and you should be able to hear me as well. Uh, Luke Jones uh, likes that Wendy McDonald Thompson's watching. You're right there, Scotty, says James Seamus McCloskey. What a wonderful name, James Seamus McCloskey. We like that. Shared, Scotty. Yes, what we'll do, guys... We were 15 minutes late in coming on tonight, so I shall do another 15 minutes. I remember a friend of mine telling me at the Edinburgh Festival, when there are all these plays, one of the lesser venues of the such a thing, there are no small parts, only small actors, and, um, you know, there was just a couple of ladies sitting down the front row in casual dress, and uh, it was two brothers, and one of them stepped forward and he said, Ladies... He said, I notice there's just two of you in tonight. However, my brother and I are professionals, and we will do the full show for you. And one of them said, well, can you hurry up, please, because we're wanting to get the place cleaned. Uh, so there you go. They were the cleaners. Uh, ah, well, I can hear you loud and clear, says Alec Robertson. For goodness sake, you could hear me in Kilmarnock, even if we weren't on the internet, I say. Uh, all's well, loud and clear. Jim Stephen Gibb, listening. Tremendous. So, guys, here's a, a little bit of a rundown. If you can check out the Eastern message, because it's an important one. I recorded it today at 1 o'clock, and you'll see it on YouTube. You'll see it on Facebook. Um, and uh, you'll see I've also started doing the odd broadcast on Periscope. Oops. Maybe I have to keep quiet on Facebook Live. But uh, I'm doing the odd broadcast on Periscope. So if you can get on to Twitter, follow me on Twitter. And uh, also follow me on Periscope. And you'll see broadcast there as well. Now then, um, can you say hello to Rachel Haldane? She's listening in tonight. Says Daniel Joseph, the fine Daniel Joseph. What a great man. Hello to Rachel Haldane. Lovely to know that you're with us, Rachel. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the World's Top Talk Show with the World's Top Broadcaster, me, Scotty McClure, live on the World's Top Broadcast platform, Facebook Live. Uh, so there we are. Your picture and sound 100%. No problems, says Frank McElroy. Now, who's going to be the first to Skype? Who's the, a grown-up watching who thinks, yeah, I can scout Scotty, uh, Scotty Dot McClue. Also, thank you to all of you who have contributed to the GoFundMe. Now, what I'm hoping to do here, guys, is uh, modernize my equipment, get myself a camera, uh, things like that, get that going. That's relatively small beer. Then I'm looking at developing an independent Scottish media. Okay? That's it in a nutshell. If you'd like to contribute to that, Get yourself some paper money, a fiver or something. Pop it out your debit card into Scotty McClure's GoFundMe. You just go to GoFundMe and put in Scotty McClure and it'll come up. 
And if you could pop something in there, that would be great. I can't do anything unless you go fund me. My hands are tied. I do need the dosh. But here's the upside. I could have gone down the shares route and I would have been overwhelmed. Anything Scotty McClure does business-wise, everybody takes a huge interest in. I would have been overwhelmed. But I'd like to do it this way because it's a much cleaner way to do it. And, uh, you know, if you've popped in a five or a ten and somebody says, whoa, take a risk there, you could lose your money, you know, what if his media thing doesn't take off? What would you do? And you think, look, it's a tenner. Okay. Can we grow up, please? So there we are. That's what we're talking about. Um, Dinky do, Scotty. I love the tune the day from the squeeze box. Yes, we had a wee tune in the squeeze box during the lunchtime broadcast. Um, so fantastic stuff. Now, say hi to the Bruins and Karen Shore, says Colin. Dinky do, Colin, to the Bruins and Karen Shore. Bruins, I think you're a great family. I love all of you. Daphne, Hen, Ma, Pa, the Bairn. Grandpa, Grandma, eh, fantastic are the brooms. Bobby Gracie's watching. A fine fellow, Bobby Gracie. You're doing some job at the golf, I can tell you that for nothing. Excuse me a second, folks. Just going to get myself a small drink because with all the stress of not uh, being able to get on in time, I had to get some drinks, you see. Mm. I've also got some tea with me as well. I insisted that they make me tea uh, because of the, the anxiety. You've no idea what it's like. You have to stay cool. You have to stay cool. The coolest person ever was the captain of the plane who said to air traffic control, I'm going for the Hudson. And air traffic control said, well, good luck, because they couldn't do anything more about it. Remember, you'll see it, uh, Captain Sully. You'll see it on the film. But um, I'm not quite Captain Sully, but you do have to stay cool when you press a button and nothing happens. Excellent stuff. So, Bobby Gracie, I say dinky do to you and your wonderful family. And I think you're amazing with the golf, the golf, and training the young man at the golf. Fantastic. Hello, Scotty. Happy Easter, says Rab Hill. Dinky do. Right. Shall we have a share? We're at half past, which means we've been on for 15 minutes. So, let's have a share, 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 share. I see. And also, if I can put upon all of you guys, it's so important. You are the ones who are building the audience. It's so important. So if you can build and build and build, share, 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 share. I love it when I look at my notifications and I see 36 people have liked your video. I think I need to see 36 people have liked and shared your video Woo! that's what we're looking at there so there you are um the uh sully film was great with tom hanks daniel joseph i'm beginning to think i don't think i'll go and see a film if tom hanks isn't in it fantastic and the captain of the ship that got hijacked he was amazing in that wonderful i remember uh, tom hanks was one flew over the cuckoo's nest wasn't he when you go right back to the early days with um all these marvellous, marvellous actors and that. That was a tremendous film. Jack Nicholson. Oh, my goodness me. What's the point of having a rocket if you can't get them up in the sky? The North Korean one blew up a bit like a damp fuse. Well, I remember having to go to court because I thought I was becoming a rocket, but the judge let me off. Uh, right. Um, happy Easter, Scotty. Did you roll your eggs today? Yes, I did, Bobby, and I was just explaining to people the whole thing about the eggs, Esther, the new life. Now, I once got laughed off the park for suggesting that we have New Year at Easter. But, of course, it makes absolute sense. And then what happened? I did a little bit of research. I looked into the historical background to the whole thing. And mm, New Year used to be at Easter, the new life. It's all in Scotty McClure's Easter message, but last night I was walking the dog, two little fox cubs running about, almost dancing around my ankles, with the dog. That shows you. Uh, keep your glasses off, you have lovely eyes, says Reb Hill. Thank you, Reb, very much appreciated. Uh, Stephen Rune is watching, excellent stuff. Mary Cart is watching, fantastic folks. Now, tonight what we're discussing, we're discussing what is the point in Easter? Okay, what's the point in Easter? Is it just 
a holiday now? Does it still have religious overtones? Right, very, very important. Is it back to the old pagan festival of Esther, the goddess of fertility? Hmm. Right, there we go. Uh, so let's share, 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 share. Excellent stuff. Um, and don't take a sip of your pint the night, Scotty. This is Gary. Oh, Gary, I've already had a sip of my pint. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. That is so nice. Very, very pleasant. Now, Nivak Shvitek, chocolate. Chocolate is the point in it. Now, um, you can't have too much chocolate. You know, I mean, that's the whole thing. I said to the doctor um, that I had four eggs for breakfast. He said, poached. I said, no Cadbury's. Uh, so there we are. Easter's just a holiday now to make chocolate manufacturers more rich, says Angie Thompson. Have you noticed, Angie, when um, Christmas is over, there's hardly... Um, a pause in the shops before the Easter eggs are out in the shelves. Absolutely incredible. So there we go. Um, it's just Christians that celebrate. Is it just Christians that celebrate Easter? Says Anna Moyes. No, I think there's um, celebration of all the festivals. But obviously it's the time if you are Christian and you believe um, that Christ made the journey to Calvary. The Romans were there in charge. They put I N R I up in the cross. Uh, Iesu Nazarene Rex Integrar. And, um, you know, here is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, because this was a man who wanted to be different. And the Romans brooked no opposition. And uh, Judea was quite a posting. I think Pontius Pilate was a Scotsman, was he not? So not from Fortingall in Perthshire. He certainly had a Scots connection, and um, you know he he was uh, appointed governor of Judea, and it was it was quite a tricky one, that. And of course here he had this very bright young man, this great teacher and lecturer, uh, who seemed to have miracle powers. And of course, anybody in those days, you know, that was in government was in an absolute panic. Of somebody doing something different and here was somebody who was talking about he was Jewish himself but he was talking about building a whole new race a whole new belief system so that's regarded as dangerous same with Socrates I mean one of the finest teachers ever and still uh, the Socratean method of teaching is an excellent small groups you know round a table and 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 one tutor uh, Socratean style. But Socrates, um, you know, he got done in for being a fabulous teacher. They don't like it. The witches, the witches were lovely people. They're not evil or bad and the witches at all, but that's the way they're painted because they were women. They were females and they were talented and they were herbalists and they could cure illness. That was the church's prerogative. That was the monks. So what did they do with the witches? They put them to death. So there you go. Uh, plus, they change the date of Easter every year. Uh, they're usually in the shop mid-January, the chocolate eggs. So I tell you that. Can we get a tune from the squeeze box to make folk react? Who moved the stone? Pontius Pilate got a flat in sight. Hill now, says Rab. Really? Wouldn't be surprised, but I think he was um, a, a Scotsman, although Pilate is not uh, a Scottish name. I don't know if he did... Pilatus or something like that, Pilatus, um, and was a, was a bit of a keep fit man. I do have the box here. Um, I won't uh, probably do it now. I'll uh, wait till we see what's going
I should really practice, shouldn't I? I just plucked that one out of hat. Yeah, a little bit of there is a green hill far away. Hi there, Scotty. James from Derry in Ireland. I could listen to you all night, says James. Sean, Sean James Seamus McCloskey. It's lovely. I could listen to you, James. I think that's fantastic. What part are you from of the Emerald Isle? Because I know it very, very well indeed. And I go right down to the south, down to Clonakilty and the Ring of Kerry and what have you there. Beautiful. Uh, so there we are. There is a green hill far away. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, next Easter's on April the 1st. So that'll be fun. There we are. I posted on April the 1st that Scotty McClure had been appointed the next Director General of the BBC, and everyone was congratulating me. And of course, April the 1st. Excellent stuff. Uh, why does Easter change every year? You'll get yourself an ASBO, says Gary L. <laughs> Fantastic. Excuse me, folks. Just going to have a wee cup of tea here. From Now, this is from Horace. I don't know if you can see it. Seize the day. Mmm. A lot of these little cameras um, are uh, the wrong way around, so you're probably seeing it the wrong way around, but we'll get that sorted. Uh, Michael McGuigan and 16 others have shared the video. Fantastic, guys. Andy Taylor's watching. Jim Stephen Gibb. A bra wee tune, Scotty. Cheers. Yeah, but did you hear me again? Da -di da 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 Going into the minor. I need to do a wee bit of practice because I just did that off the top of the head. I hope you're on later because I've missed half your show because uh, it's not working properly, says George Raffin. George, everything's working here properly now, as far as I understand. Uh, I read Branston Pickle, want to make Easter eggs. So there you are, says Colin. Fantastic. Well, we don't know if they do or not. Um, you remind me of Les Dawson. You're really funny, says Nivag Shitek. Do you know, Nivag? Les Dawson was perhaps my greatest comedy hero ever, and I moved down to the area. I went to work in Preston and Blackpool in the northwest of England, and uh, Les Dawson died just about that time. Tragic, because he was one of my heroes, and I got to meet so many people in show business, a gentleman called Bernard Manning. I remember walking into the room, and I said, Hey, up, Bernard. They went, hello, son. <laughs> it's fantastic. So there you are. Wonderful stuff. Uh, you want to get yourself a tease made because the missus is catching up on Doctor Who, says Angie Thompson. Now, this is a big one. Do you think Scotty McClure would make a good Doctor Who? Would you like to see me coming out of the TARDIS? Nee, na, 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 na. I'll tell you. So there you are. Think about that one. Yes, the tea's made, the goblin tea's made. Fantastic stuff. So there we are. I uh, spoke to a gentleman from television the other day, and he said, thanks so much, Scotty. We'll definitely keep you in mind, but we've got all the bases covered. Mm, can't wait to see that lot. So there you go. Um, now then, lots going on here. I'd like to have the discussion in Easter. Any of you up for a Skype? in don't be frightened just do it get your skype scotty dot mcclue and come on for a chit chat because i want to build up the audience and obviously people prefer it the more interactive the program is it's great as interacting on here but it would be really good to be fully interactive and get the phones going so there you go we did have them last week but again technical challenges all the time so please Please, I beg of you, I shouldn't have to beg, but go fund me. Say, Scotty McClue's been making me smile for 25 years. I can spare him a fiver. Uh, right, are they still saber rattling in Korea, Scotty? Uh, so there you are. Or is it the mad half Scotsman called Donald Trump? Yes, he is half a Scotsman, isn't he? So we could chat away to him because the great thing about the Scots They've never ever subscribed to the class system. So they don't actually think, I am better than you. When it boils down to, you know, you have all the wee different, I you think you could, hi. <laughs> we'll see, I so you will. All that kind of stuff. But in actual fact, we don't go into it. You'd be better off in the old phone in and Scott FM days, Scotty. Rab, it may 
have escaped your notice. But Scott FM doesn't exist. And unless they make me Doctor Who, I can't go back 23 years and get back into Scott FM's phone in. Of course we loved it because it was set up technically. Scott FM was Scotland's finest radio hour. But you start something different, it's a lot long before it gets clobbered, and now these frequencies are taken up by just jukebox radio, just playing out the songs, and some guy pops up now and again and goes, yeah, that was the so-and-so's by the so-and-so's, hope you're enjoying listening to this radio station, and all that sort of stuff. But nobody actually connects with the audience big style and says, how are you all tonight? Get to your telephones because I want to speak to you. And that's what we need. This program, trust me, would go very, very well on a national television station for one hour at night. We need to decide, is it between 11 and midnight and what it is. But Scotty McClure pops up, right? Nice cheap programming for them because it's just me, a talking head. And we all get together and we chit chat on the telly. Be fabulous. I was looking through my telly the other day. Nothing, nothing I wanted to see. And of course, I'm a massive YouTuber because I've got Scotty McClure's YouTube channel. But I also look at all the historical stuff. It's tremendous. So there you go. Um, I'm out with my daughter in a soft play area in Paraguay. I've got you blasting out of the phone. I wonder what everyone thinks is going on, says John McDonough. This is wonderful. Now, you see, this is music to my ears. And I know it's music to your ears as well, guys. This is Scott FM, if you like. But with Paraguay listening, with Brazil listening, with Spain, France, Germany, Russia, China, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, the Arctic, the Antarctic, they're all listening right now. We just need to make people aware that it's on and they'll come and join us. Evening, Scotty. Happy Easter to everyone and to your good self. Dinky you do, says Alex McCafferty. Hi, Scotty. What's your Skype address again, says James Shemus. McCloskey, James Seamus, you get on to that, Scotty.McClue. That's all it is. Capital S, small c-o-t-t-i-e, dot, full stop, period. M, capital M, small c, capital C, L-U-E. Scotty.McClue. Go and do it right now and we will chit-chat on the Skype. Scotty McClue, I still have your old VHS video. So it's called, I know, um, that should be reissued, it really should, uh, so thousands and thousands and thousands of that sold, it was wonderful, we actually outsold Billy Connolly, bless him, and I'm a massive, massive Billy Connolly fan, I sent him strength, uh, there used to be another good phone in radio show, Andy the Priest, was it on Radio 4th, yes it was, Father Andy Monaghan, a lovely guy, and uh, he used to take calls on, I think it was a Saturday night, was it Saturday evening? And you could ask Andy about anything. Father Andy Monaghan, Radio 4th, and then I did Radio 4th's uh, Sunday phone in on a Sunday morning between 10 o'clock sharp and midday. And that was tremendous as well. Uh, nothing on all weekend. My lad watches YouTube all the time uh, about Titanic, War of the Worlds. He even went to the musical version in Glasgow. Angie, you're quite right. I've been looking at stuff. I mean, you can get stuff that interests me that might not interest everybody, but a lot of marine stuff, a lot of historical stuff, a lot of stuff about um, the old royals. You can see George V's funeral on there, Queen Victoria's funeral's on there. Uh, you know, not just funerals, I mean, Churchill's funeral, Pathé News. You can see all these things, and it just recalls the day, because I was about eight watching Churchill's funeral on a Saturday uh, morning, and we'd seen him on the telly as well, not long before, although he was really quite an old man, latterly, but he hung on, and he hung on, and he hung on. I'm just trying to think what age he would be when he went. Was he not 91 or something like that? He was, he was certainly 90. You're a class actor, Shrap Hill, on TV. Everyone will get six months. <laughs> it's fantastic, but I think, excuse me a wee second, folks, just having a wee top up here. There we go. Ah. That's what you want to do, I say. I tell you. Right. Um, yes, um, I'll just, I can take my glasses off now because somebody said, why do you have your glasses and look over them all the time? The thing is, when I look down, I can't see. When I look forward, 
I can see you lot fine. Gordon Sterling, Happy Easter McClure. Not been listening to you for a few weeks. Had some problems after my vasectomy reversal procedure. Agnes is in the huff. So there you are. I once went into the doctor. He said, can I help you? I said, uh, yes, I wonder if you can help me out. He said, which way did you come in? No, 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 no. I said to him, I said, uh, I'd need your advice, doctor. He said, what was it? I said, I was going to ask you about a vasectomy. He said, I think with your face, you'll probably not need one. <laughs> so there you go. Right. Uh, yes, YouTube can be good for history projects, says Angie. Absolutely. YouTube is phenomenal. It is wonderful. And go and support the Scotty McClue YouTube channel. Write all this stuff down with a pencil. A stub of a hard black pencil and a thruppany jotter with no batter beside your phones. And uh, just write this down. Take a wee note of it. Scotty McClue YouTube channel. Everybody in the world visit that big style, right? And then when you're in there, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Don't panic. But you just click subscribe. Because if I get another 180 subscribers, we can add that as a broadcast platform. And we can get hoping hoping to see if we can unite all the platforms and broadcast simultaneously. That's why I need you to go fund me. Because I can't afford to do it all myself. But if every single one of you gives between two quid and a million quid, then we are laughing. We can get on with all that. So come on. Uh, how's your Easter, Captain? Did you roll your eggs down the hill? The weather was rotten. No, no, George, the weather was not rotten. The weather was wonderful. It's just wet. That's all. That's not rotten. You need to remember, if you live in Scotland, or a country like Scotland, Iceland, or whatever, the Arctic, the Antarctic, the Tierra del Fuego, if you live there, and you every day say, horrible day today, Dreadful, foul, awful, horrible day. Most of your life will be awful and horrible. So every day of your life, George, is a beautiful day. It just might be a bit wet and blowy. And that's why we understate the weather in Scotland, right? Now, I'm originally an Argyle man, right? And uh, what you do, if it's coming down in stair rods, They'll say in their guy, aye, shouty the day, shouty, all that sort of stuff. And if you can't stand up for the wind, they'll go, ooh, fresh wine, fresh the day, fresh the day, my boy. So there we are. You should apply for a lot of the grants, says Dan McWilliams. Do you know, Dan, that's not a bad idea. Would they allow us to set up an independent media in Scotland, non-biased, with no agenda, a free media? Hmm, very interesting. Uh, what was it the big gun said? There's no such thing as bad weather, just the bad clothes. <laughs> well, he's quite right. If you're not dressed for the weather, if you've got on your waterproofs, your big yellow waterproofs and your leggings and your welly boots and your sou'wester, you can stand anything. Uh, did you have a wee swig uh, at the half there, Scotty, or some other juice? Enjoy if you did. No, 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 we've got two refreshments, two sauces. Of refreshment. One is the pint of water. Mm. Lovely. And um, I did see they were looking for a gin taster. It's 20 grand and you travel throughout the world. I thought, well, I maybe have a wee bit of experience on my CV there. And I have a cup of tea. Oh, it's so lush. It's wonderful stuff. Thank you, dude. So there we are. Uh, now, um, so you've got that. Yes, applying for a lottery grant, it's a good idea. But if everybody just dipped into their pocket and said, I'll give Scotty a couple of quid. Where's his account? Just go on and do it. Are you going to miss it? You know, are you going to do something else with the two quid? I mean, if you're really, 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 really out and you're strapped, then still go on GoFundMe and share it on Twitter and Facebook. Just click share. Um, right. No, Rab, it's not that in a cup. Uh, do you or did you know other great phone-in DJs? Mike Elliott at Century FM. Do you know that before Mike Elliott went on, I was his test call? So there we are. The boss of the radio station rang me and he said, I've got this great new guy. Doing a phone in, take a call from him and put him through his paces. Sadly, Mike's no longer with us. 
lovely, lovely, lovely man, Mike the Mouth, knew him very, very well indeed. And uh, we used to have a lot of laughs together, a lot of calls together. I remember being down working on the station when Mike was on holiday and he phoned in. Funny, funny guy. If you ever watch the film Billy Elliot uh, with Julie Walters, you'll see Mike the Mouth, one of the big guys that they filmed out at Easington. Easington. Easington Colliery. Aye, in the northeast there, eh? No problem. And uh, that was Mike. So, yes, I knew Mike very well. Uh, Alan Bezzy, Peter Price, James Stanich. All these great, great phone-in jocks. Tremendous stuff. Alan Robson in the northeast. I haven't actually met Alan, but uh, but I know his name. Obviously, well, everybody does with his Night Owls program. Um, Mike Graham who's uh, on Top Sport. There's a new talk radio station in London and uh, and what have you. So yes, I know all these people very, very well indeed. Uh, and I was watching Nigel Farage on LBC in London. That I'd like to get on LBC. I'd, 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 I think that'd be good. Scotty McClue across London banned the Cockneys first night. Oh, right. Uh, so, yes, knew them all, John. Absolutely wonderful people. And uh, we've got lots and lots happening there. Now, if you'd like to Skype in, feel free to do so. Quite a few things to tell you. A little bit of housekeeping here. Can you please get everybody on the Facebook page who probably know nothing of this show? I can do my best by keeping the link. There's two. Well, there's, there's several Facebook pages of Scotty McClue. There's scotty-mcclue.com, there's Dinky Doo, there's the World's Top Talk Show. There's two Scotty McClue pages. The one with the nine after it is the one we broadcast on. The other is a page that people go to. There's about five and a half thousand people have gone and clicked like. Now, I think they don't even know about the show, but I can't actually uh, see if I can broadcast simultaneously on the two pages. I'll need to speak to Facebook about that. But uh, if you can spread the word and say, here's the link for Scotty McClure on a Sunday night, because you're ahead of me on it. You've actually got Facebook in front of you. I'm just talking to the broadcast screen. Uh, so there you are. What happened to We Fat Bob and the Lovable Lass? Don't know anything about We Fat Bob, Colin. Uh, the Lovable Lass. Uh, I still see her on Facebook, and uh, the other lovable lass I still talk to occasionally as well. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady as well. They were tremendous people. They could type and type and type and type. Superb typists. I mean, that's that was the real strength of the show. It wasn't really, I mean, I got a lot of the credit, but these girls could type. And, um, you know, they got the calls all on and off. That's how we got things like 460,000 calls in one week not all on air of course but that's what we got that was the official printout number four hundred and sixty thousand there was almost quarter of a million people listening to the program every half hour how about that there you go ian collins is good on lbc as well great chat sometimes as george absolutely robin galloway he's hung in there well says nevag robin great guy as well fabulous broadcaster Lots of time for Robin. Robin and I used to do a handover in the morning at Scott FM. And the figures went shooting through the roof for that handover. We just sat and had a laugh with each other. Just sat and took the mince out of each other. He called me Feather. And he would play Feather's tune. And I would go in with my fingerless mitts, which he called Hummel Dodies. That was the name for them from the northeast. And we'd just have a great laugh. Andrew McDonald's watching Dinky Doo, Andrew. Lovely to hear from you uh, can we have another share what time have we got yes <clears throat> we're uh, we're getting tight for time so what we'll do is we'll share 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 so there we are also if you'd rather pop something into paypal if you go to scotty mcclue's website you're in good company because another 10 million plus have already done it and uh, you'll see the paypal thing www.scotty-mcclue.com pop something into paypal there's a good healthy balance of paypal but it's not everyone's cup of tea so uh you know on to the go fund me with you i say uh yes i might apply for grants it would be good stuff i remember the great wind-ups is the fact oh robin's wind-ups were outstanding radio 
tremendous. I wouldn't have liked to have been the receiving end of them right enough, uh, but absolutely outstanding, wonderful stuff. It looks uh, part gin in your cup. You're saying, that's a classic, Scotty. Well covered up, I'm raising a wee glass of whiskey to you. Slangy to you, and dinky do slangeva, spelt S-L-A-I-N-T-E. M-H-A-T-H Slainty Mahath Slangeva There we are. Galic's quite a difficult one to get a hold of. Falchi Falchi Key de Millie Falchi Don the Scotty McClue Show I guess Facebook Live um, So there we go. Hi Scotty from the Kyles of Butte Tremendous. Now you're obviously not sitting in the Kyles yet. So are you up beside the maids? Or are you in Colin Trive? Or are you in Robotach? Or are you at Tinnebruch? Or where are you? Are you at Kames? These are all part of my old stamping ground, you know. Uh, so there we are. The wind-up calls. We used to listen to them work in the bus. Yes. Everybody listened to Robin in the morning and listened to Scotty McClue at night. It was amazing. People used to say that um, they were listening on their um, mobile uh, Walkmans and things like that because you hadn't got the phones in then. There wasn't the same internet following. In fact, we didn't have the internet at all. This was 1994, right? So it was 1994. And I didn't actually go on the internet till 1998. And I was reasonably early with that when I was down in Manchester working a huge radio station. Uh, Victor Brocklebank and his Fash FM notes. Hector, Hector Brocklebank and Fash FM. That was it. Kidami Lefarci, says George Raffin. Fantastic. A hundred thousand welcomes, George. Falci, Falci. An audience with Scotty McClure and Cumbernauld was brilliant, says Rab. That was a great night, Rab. That was a great night. That audience was superb. Uh, so there you are. I always remember um, one of the producers getting a little bit anxious because he said, do you have the script? I said, well, there's no script. He went, oh, we would, you know, prefer a script. I said, well, well you'll not be getting one. So that was that totally off the top of the head. The whole thing, the same as the shows as well. Imagine you've got in the kitty now, Scotty, on GoFundMe. Steve Burrows, I have, the last time I looked, £325. So if you'd like to make it £350, you would be very welcome so to do. So if all of you go there and put in £2, five of you put in two quid, <coughs> it'd be tremendous. Came Scotty, I'm just back from the glue pot. Andrew McDonald, you're talking my language. I used to go into the glue pot and we called it the glue pot because once you were in, you were stuck. So there you go. Fantastic. I had friends in a little cottage just down from the glue pot. And uh, many's a happy time I spent in the glue pot. So dinky do. So unbeknownst to the people in the glue pot, Scotty McClure has sat in there uh, in the table. If you're at the big room and you had your back to the bar, so sitting in the table there, almost like a, a bit of a recess, sitting in there. That was my favourite place in the glue pot. Can you got, not get a slot at the pavilion? That would draw good audiences, Dan. Yes, I mean, would people turn out nowadays to see Scotty McClure live on the theatre? Would they come out and see me, do you think? I mean, you tell me what you think. Fantastic. Oh, here's somebody signing in big time. What have we got here? Aha! Uh -huh. Thank you very much. This was I was able to get you on another device, and I thought that was rather good. So there we are. So I'm just going backwards with the other device now, and seeing what is what. Right. What is this here? Aha! Uh -huh. Excellent stuff. So there we go. Voicemail has one new message. We like that. Right. Uh, you're a knowledgeable guy. You'd be good in a pub quiz, I bet. Well, uh, I did a pub quiz in Liverpool. The first question was, who are you looking at? So there you go. Um, a ton of fish right up to your back door, Scotty. That's right. I've got uh, ten ton of haddock and ten ton of cod. And I believe you're on the fish shop at the end. So I'll just, where do you want me to dump it? I'm coming up the back of the front. I remember hearing it. Fantastic stuff. Great guy. Uh, that's the phone in, lol, says Angie Thompson. Uh, I loved you and Robin and Scott FM. Mrs. used to win loads of prizes, but now it's all English that win them. Great times. Thanks, Scotty, says Alex McCafferty. Scott FM, as I uh, started to say earlier, Alex, was Scotland's finest radio hour. It really, really, really was. Do you prefer me sitting back, guys, like that? 
so you're not getting so much of my pus right in your face. Um, maybe I'll look at that. I mean, do please tell me. This is your show, remember? It's a global show. And you can tell me how we develop it. So this is show number 30, by the way. We've done 30 programs. What do you think of that? Not bad. Um, Angie Thompson, the wind-up calls on YouTube as well. Absolutely. And you'll hear a lot of Scotty McClue calls on YouTube as well, guys. So get on to the Scotty McClue YouTube channel. That's what you put into your Google. Scotty McClue YouTube channel. And up it will come. And you'll get the Easter uh, message from today. Uh, what happened to Terry McKinney, says Nivak? I don't know. I haven't heard from Terry for some time. He was a great guy as well. The whole crowd were tremendous at Scott Howe. It was a wonderful, wonderful radio station. Think about it. A massive, massive radio station. Another radio boss actually derided it at the start as a poor wee chunter of a station. And that they weren't worried about it. And then, bang! Off we went. Galloway in the morning, McClure in the evening, fantastic DJs for the rest of the day. Um, astrology, phone-ins, sport, news, 50% talk, fabulous music, wonderful signal, right? You could get it, I think you could get it right up to Dundee and right away down to the borders and all that sort of stuff. Tremendous Wonderful management, super bored, all that sort of stuff. And um, it just was right. It was just right. And then, of course, they had to clobber it. And I had to make sure that I did not become bitter in the least. I was only out of work for um, two days. <laughs> One of the bosses of another station rang up and he said, What happened? I said, I don't know. It's absolute madness. And he said, well, I can't start you tomorrow, so it'll be Monday now. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? These are the kind of lovely people that are out there. Uh, it was ahead of its time, said David Gardner. It was, and it was a class station. I remember Scott FM talking to an old gent about the Clyde steamers. Yes. And, you know, I got a lovely, we had a wonderful gentleman that called. He was well in his 80s, and his, his name was Donald. And he was an absolute gent. And then I got a lovely email from his son to tell me that Donald had passed away and that he thoroughly enjoyed the programmes. There was a lot of that, a lot of people like that. Um, <clears throat> and they used to say, Scotty, never mind what uh, your new management or the people that have bought it are doing to you or anything like that. The show was fantastic, you know, tremendous, lovely. The support has been brilliant. And that's why we're still here after 25 years, you know, because there are a number of times that I've said, well, do we bother now, you know, all that? And you think, yes, you do. Because I, personally, haven't even scratched the surface of broadcasting yet. Haven't even scratched the surface. And I think there's great comedy to come. I think there's television to come. I've been talking uh, to uh, super London agents about stuff, and everybody's very excited. So watch this space when it comes to Scotty McClure. Uh, use the 325 to boost your Facebook posts and spread the word. And then get a venue and do a live gig. Now, we're going to have to get more reliable links and cameras and things like that. Uh, give us more on Facebook, Scotty. Is there a reason you only do one hour as a stint? We could do with a wee bit more. And <clears throat> I think I'm speaking for everybody. Think you do. Yes, but I don't want you all fed up. I don't want you to say, ah, old McClure, drive you up the wall, Swayman. Uh, I don't want that, you see. Um, so there we are. So it's a, it's a bit of um, modesty. Modesty forbids. <laughs> so there you go. Modesty forbids. But we might look at doing it. If we can get you go funding me, just putting a few quid in there, um, you know, and get some decent equipment going, then um, perhaps we could look at doing more shows during the week and build it up and get the phones going. And then I think we, because uh, we are truly global. I mean, there's a gentleman from Paraguay gentlemen from Australia, Australia on this morning, Canada, America, Europe. It's tremendous. So there we are. Uh, do a wee 15 minutes every night, Scotty. An outtake for the news. David Lafferty's watching. Dinky do to you, David. Now, I'll tell you what I was thinking about, guys, and you can tell me if you like this idea. Um, it was proposed that the British Broadcasting Corporation, known other, otherwise known as the BBC, um, you know, it was put to them that people would like a news at six o'clock that was purely a Scottish news. 
So there was the Scottish Six, hashtag Scottish Six. You'll see it, those of you that do a lot of tweeting on Twitter, which is the best place to tweet, of course. And um, what was interesting about that is the BBC knocked it back and said, no, you're not having that. We want the national news coming into Scottish houses um, so we can tell you what's happening in London and make sure you Scots don't try and slope off and go independent and take the money with you. Because the BBC, I think they um, take about £325 million a year out of Scotland. Now that would be nice invested in the Scottish Broadcasting Corporation and then we could do what we like and have it regulated in Holyrood, in Edinburgh. So all Scottish Broadcasting is regulated at Holyrood. And um, you could look at that Scottish Broadcasting Corporation taking over from the British Broadcasting Corporation and getting that £325 million. But they came back and they said that they would do um, a channel and there was £30 million available to program it. Can you see where my GoFundMe is going? Anyway, I'm asking for £2 and £5 and £10. And one lovely person gave £100. Marvellous. Anyway. Um, so £30 million, but if I said to you that the budget for radio in Scotland, uh, for public service radio, is around £25 million, it puts it in proportion that you're not going to get a great television channel. And of course, people might think this television channel is going to be filled with stuff that ensures that the Scots, you know, don't wander. Mm, get my meaning? Nudge, nudge. You see? So they might not want the Scots to want now. What I'm proposing, I am a newscaster. That's one of my skills to trade, if you like. Just like people are bricklayers and pilots and bankers and financiers and all that stuff. I'm an economist, I'm a banker, I'm a historian, I'm an actor, I'm a writer, I'm a broadcaster, I'm also a newscaster. Now, do you see where I'm going with this? Scotty McClure could bring you the Scottish Six. So for 15 minutes every night, I pop up and bring you the Scottish news. And then that saves you having to watch the news at six coming from London. Can you see where I'm, I'm going with this? Uh, so there we are. One hour's long enough. You really make our Sunday night? I think so. What happened to Go Radio? I don't know. Somebody told me it was launching very soon. But I haven't heard anything. Tweeting's okay if you're a budget. The Scots give it you, not the British bottom cream. I'm following Donald Trump on Twitter. It's great entertainment if it wasn't real. Agreed, 15 minutes a night is a consistent advert. I've just realised we're getting more of you tonight. Keep it going, Scotty, says Alec. No, Alec, I will need to go. Um, the reason you're getting a little bit more is we were late in starting. I was all ready to start at 1 minute to 10, sitting nicely with my hair all brushed, and then suddenly... Bang, with a connection problem. So there we go. But we sorted that. McClure, have you had some work done in your teeth? Rumour is you have spent 60k on dental implants. Right. Here we go. There you go, Gordon. No teeth at all, son. Okay. <laughs> That's what's happened, Gordon. No teeth at all, see? Surprise! Uh, right, uh, so there we are. Now, of course, I haven't dead to what done in my teeth. Um, I've just realised we're getting more of you tonight. Yes, absolutely, Alex, no problem at all. But I am going to push off in uh, about uh, two or three minutes now. <clears throat> very, very important. Can every single one of you during the week share this with everyone in your network? Also, write click the link to Scotty McClue's page and include it. Can you go on to YouTube and subscribe? Can you stick a couple of pounds into GoFundMe? Or stick a couple of pounds into PayPal? Can you um, make sure you follow me on everything? And can you make sure everyone else follows me as well? I think an hour a week's plenty for all you guys. A little of me goes a long, long way. So there we are. So tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live at 10 on Facebook Live Dinky Do. Get some sponsors and advertisers. That will get the coffers up. A wee tune before you go, Scotty. 
Scotty at six with the Scottish News. It sounds like there could be truth in that show. Andrew would sponsor your bonnets. So they are. Do you know that the biggest brands in Scotland are uh, Iron Brew, Tannock's Carmel Wavers, Radio Clyde, and Scotty McClue. Isn't that interesting? There you go, guys. Thank for subscribing to YouTube, Captain, says George. Good for you, George. Appreciate it. If we get a 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, I can use that as a broadcast platform as well. So we'll be popping up there, and I'll get myself a decent camera. Did you get plenty of chocolate eggs today, says George McBean? Scotty, you can start up a call centre. Imagine getting you on the call. How great would that be to sell the doors and the windows? There's an idea. Scotty McClue's call centre, selling everything. So you, you only speak to Scotty McClue if you're wanting to buy your double glazing or your sweet. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll maybe get in touch with some of the businesses and see if they would like to do that. I used to work in Tunnock's. Uh, so there we are. Until I get laid off, says Andrew Thompson. Absolutely. I know Tarks very, very well. And uh, also, and thoroughly enjoy the old caramel wafers, of course. So we'll get subscribing there. And that is excellent stuff. Right. I think it's time for me to push off and let you all get on with your night. It has been an absolute privilege being with you. Fantastic stuff. As I say, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Uh, if George is around, George, I'm going to sing. So there we are. Uh, Tenants, Scotty, McClure. <laughs> put me on the cans. Remember they used to put the girls on the cans. Put Scotty McClure in the cans. Edit quite fantastic stuff. So there you are. So gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure. Or just go to GoFundMe and put in Scotty McClure. Up it will pop. Stick in a couple of quid. And we are starting to get on the move. I shall look at improving the cameras and what we can do with the show. If you've, if you've got any other ideas for funding, do let me know. If you'd like to advertise or something like that, do let me know. I'm sure we can find some way to do it. But we're just building and building and building. And all of us, every single one of us, you and I, were having fun. And that's what matters. So there you go. Um, right, Gary L, good night to you. Dinky do, I say, and the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. A waiter, then au revoir, and a cheerio. Cheerio, my darlings. Dinky-doo. Scotty McClure has left the building. Have a great week. <laughs>